full bust. Forgot. forgot. And we'll have that. And yes, we are shocked. Shocked! Holyfield Ruiz is on the ropes. We'll be talking about that as well right now. Let's go ringside. Live boxing with Bob and Ted. Thanks, Brian and Max. We're at the Soaring Eagle Casino in Mount Pleasant, Michigan. Friday Night Fights presented by Miller High Life. And we start things off with a 10-round super middleweight showdown. Damon McCreary and ETN Whitaker will square off in our first bout of the evening. The Bulldog, Damon McCreary, is 28 years of age. Has his infamous godfather hat on. In the red Tan it all with seven this knockouts. Turned pro in November of 1998. His last five opponents. Pedestrian win percentage of 54%. ETN Whitaker, ET from Warren, Ohio. Weighted at 172 pounds. 19, 4, and 2. 11 knockouts. His last five opponents. A winning percentage of 49%. His last two. A combined record of 20 and 30. Well, we saw McCreary. He feels that the hat that he wears makes him even better in the ring. McCreary and Whitaker in the Friday Night Fight Spotlight. It's like power. When I put it on, I feel uh, all this energy that's just making me turn into a, a superhero or something. And before you know it, when I take it off, I'm that superhero and the bell ring, there he goes. Simple as that. Well, I, yeah, I heard he likes to wear a hat now. I don't know if that's a, a little confidence builder like said, giving power or whatever. I'll put that hat in the third row tonight, you know what I mean? Along with his head. So you get a look at the hat of McCreary. Not the exact motif that Don Corleone wore in The Godfather, but it works for him. Saginaw Chippewa rules for tonight's bouts. Three knockdown rule is in effect as referee Frank Garza gives the final instruction. Standing eight count also in effect. Fighter can be saved with the bell in the final round only. Only the referee will stop an accidental foul. They'll go to the scorecards after half the rounds are complete. In this case, five rounds. Whitaker lost to McCreary. In this very ring, September the 10th, 1999, lost a four-round decision. McCreary said Whitaker had his track shoes on that night, so he was not able to shine. We'll see if anything changes. McCreary in the silver trunks. Whitaker in the black and gold. We're going to find out who's improved the most since that first fight. It was McCreary's third pro fight, and it was Whitaker's fourth pro fight. Well, since that time, Whitaker has been a bit busier. He has 25 fights in 25 months as a professional. Now, not against the stiffest of competition, but at one point earlier this year, Teddy, he fought on January the 17th, did Whitaker, in Michigan. Got a good six-round win against Joseph Luria, 18-1. Then he fought three days later in Ohio, and he knocked out a guy named John Spell. He has a couple good wins with some decent guys, Whitaker, as we've been talking about. He also has a win over Glenn Robinson, who was a former national amateur champ. Right now, contrasting styles. McCreary using his legs, maybe his quicker hands, to be very unorthodox, popping in, popping out real quickly. While the taller, longer, rangier Whitaker would like to establish some control of distance. Now we have to start with the jab. Watch the head. All right. Again, the speed of McCreary is showing. But that speed gets taken away if he stays on those ropes. Whitaker, very awkward, a little wide with his punches. McCreary will come at you very unexpected. He'll stay out there and he'll be orthodox boxing in one second, and then all of a sudden, because of that quickness, he will jump in. You have to be alert if you're Whitaker. Not let that beam 
taller man turn into a disadvantage where he gets caught standing straight up. Being tall only means something if you can find a way to use it. Right now, Whitaker's not using it. He's coming in close to the short McCreary. Whitaker wants to draw a line in the canvas. Where he can use that jab, use that height. The key is, does he know how to deliver it? That is the key. Right hand from McCreary. He's landed the bigger punches at the end of round number one. Well, coming up in our main event tonight, we get a look at the former two-time heavyweight champion of the world, someone Teddy knows very well. Michael Moore squares off in our main event tonight against Dale Crow. Glad you could join us for Friday Night Fights from Mount Pleasant, Michigan. Bob Pop along with Teddy Atlas. And Teddy, you know, uh, Michael Moore got tattooed a little bit against uh, Terrence Lewis in that first round, but he responded. Of course, he's a two-time champion. You look at Dale Crow, tough man, limited experience. All the signs point to Michael Moore, but you think there's one thing that might give Dale Crow a slight edge? There is one. There's one advantage that Michael Moore does not have in this fight, and he's used to having all the time, being the southpaw. Usually he's the only southpaw in the ring. That's not the case tonight. He's in there with Dale Crow, who is the southpaw. So that edge is not there in that way, and that's the one edge that he doesn't have. And that's what Crow is really going to have to hang his hat on. Well, Crow did say that he had some problems trying to find people to work with another southpaw. So we wonder how that will play out as far as this fight unfolds. That coming up in our main event, round number two on the way between ETM Whitaker and Damon McCreary. And you see in the first round, McCreary had the edge as far as punches landed. Ten of them were power shots. The right hand was the key punch for McCreary in that first round. Off his head, off his head. Let go of his head. Step back, step back. All right. There's that unexpectedness from McCreary with that speed. He's outside one second, he's inside the next. But I believe the taller Whitaker should be starting to concentrate on right now, Bob, is to have himself set to punch on the outside. And take it two ways. McCreary stays out there, use the jab, keep him out there, work off that. Other times, be ready for McCreary to jump in and catch him coming in. McCreary does what a lot of guys with natural speed and natural ability will do. They break the rules and jump in. If you're ready, you can catch him. He has done a good job, though, landing that overhand right. He's found the home for it. He's going to stay with it until it's taken away from him. It's not broke, don't fix it. And I think part of that, too, is the fact that uh, Whitaker just doesn't really throw a convincing jab. He landed two of 28 in the first round, but he's not using it to, as you mentioned earlier, dictate the height advantage. And that's where it starts when you're the taller man. That is your first line of control, offensively and defensively. As we chronicled earlier, since their last meeting, Whitaker has been busier. Some good wins in there, and then a bunch of soft touches for him. But he has stayed busy. That time, Whitaker was trying to catch McCreary jumping in. Again, you can see Whitaker's looking for that kind of left hook now. Both these guys with limited amateur experience, 30 amateur bouts from McCreary, 27 for Whitaker. Whitaker got involved in tough man competition. Here's that right again over the top. Beat that left hook. It's a contest right now. Is Whitaker's left hook going to win or the right hand of McCreary? So far, McCreary's right hand has found the mark more often. Attention, newly wed gal. Before you rush into a beer purchase, ask yourself this. What kind of man 
do you want? That's right. You want a high life man. An investment in the high life is an investment in your future. Friday Night Fights on ESPN2, presented by Miller High Life. And in part by Western Union Money Transfer, the fastest way to send money worldwide. The Soaring Eagle Casino in Mount Pleasant, Michigan. Glad you can join us for Friday Night Fights. Damon McCreary, the Bulldog. 10-0 with seven knockouts, 28 years of age from Detroit, Michigan. Never been past seven rounds in his career. He said that Whitaker asked for a rematch after their first meeting in which McCreary won a four-round decision early in their career. And uh, he said, I'm a fair guy. I gave it to him. McCreary landed 15 of 33 power shots in that second round. That overhand right the key factor. You know, Teddy, these two guys fought, obviously, earlier in their career, September of 99. And they know each other. And McCreary's had, uh, Whitaker's had more, ex more fights since then. But you would think, knowing McCreary, since they fought the first time, that they would try to, oh, good right hand, hurt Whitaker, and down he goes. And there's that speed to deliver that right hand, that unexpectedness. He jumped right in and got it off before Whitaker could react. I was going to say, they've had time to sort of prepare for each other a little bit. They knew they were going to fight each other. You would think that Whitaker would have tried to get a jab going in his game plan. Well, McCurry said he was going to really take it to Whitaker this time. And he is, and another right hand sends down Whitaker. McCreary's being allowed to be in close, and when you're the shorter man, that's good for you. Bad for the taller man. There is a three knockdown rule in effect. That is the second knockdown here in the third round. One more time, and Whitaker's done. And even just a flipping left hand seemed to bother Whitaker. Now Whitaker's leaning forward, so McCreary can take steps back and create openings. Maybe even an opening for an uppercut since the taller Whitaker's starting to lean. That was a push, not a knockdown. There's that uppercut. And he whips it right to the head. McCreary wings another right hand. Now the idea for McCreary is to step back, not allow Whitaker to tie him up. Whitaker has to try to survive 50 more seconds. Very simple. Whitaker wants to survive. McCreary wants to get it over with. That's it. Creating room, and he created room there. That's the third knockdown, so the bout is over. Whitaker's complaining, but there's a three knockdown rule in effect. Got to know the rules. Not as if Frank Garza didn't know him. Didn't need to make a count. Third knockdown. That's it. 223 of round three. We'll see on the replay on that last knockdown. Uh, it wasn't just a punch drone. It was McCreary thinking under pressure, using his feet. Using his feet not to get away, but to step back to create room. Where he could finish the job. Well, the hat obviously had the power at least tonight. First knockdown here in round three. Timed right hand, Teddy. Yeah, he was working all night. He knew enough to stay with it. He was using his speed to get it off. There's the second knockdown. Looked like it was on top of the head. David Reed, And to finish tonight, McCreary keeps his feet moving, keeps himself free, doesn't allow himself to get tied up, and keeps those hands moving. Gets that third knockdown. McCreary landed 46 of 141 punches. 42 of his 46 connects were power shots. So Damon McCreary remains unbeaten. The 11 0 gets his eighth stoppage, wins the rematch against Whitaker, who he decisioned a year and a half ago. 223 of round number three. Michael Moore coming up in our main event, but first we check in with Brian and Max. It's a good looking hat. It's a good look. Might work. <laughs> you know, it's just my time for the classic KO. Bantamweight title fight in the early 1980s. Jeff Chandler. And Julian Solis, this rematch, uh, Chandler had already lost the title at this point. Ch no, Chandler, Chandler won it, and, and they're fighting in a rematch. Jeff, uh, Jeff Chandler was 
when I was a kid, considered the heir apparent, apparent, even though there was a gap to Carlos Zarate, he was supposed to be the next great bantamweight, made a bunch of defenses, wound up losing to Sandoval in a, in a big upset, and then never fought again, as I recall. Here we go. July 25th, 1981. It is the bantamweight title fight on our classic KO. <laughs> Blocked up the right, and Solis goes down. Solis is hurt and courageously tries to rise. Jeff Chandler scores a sudden dramatic knockout over former champion Julian Solis and retains his bantamweight crown. Classic KO is brought to you by Miller High Life.